Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to You Create Art at Home. My name is Bess and I am going to be with you for the next hour and a half. Um, you are at the place that is going to inspire you, give you some technical tips, allow you to create and connect, which is what this is all about with your creative side. So welcome to the Cornwall Federation WI. I am Karen Bessel, all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Yes, it is 4 a.m. Yes, I am balmy. Um, and I am so excited to give you part two of our Cornish painting evening. Now, I'm going to see there is nobody on at the moment. So let's hope this is all going out and going out live. Um, I know that there's a few of you coming. So I'm going to just wait for you to come in. Here we go. We've got, oh, David Bessel's online. Well, my husband's watching, even if you're not watching in England. So I know Pam is watching. Uh, she should be. So I'm just going to carry on talking until you all arrive. Here we go. Mum's here. So at least I know there's one person that I've got up for at 4 a.m. in the morning. Let's hope there's some more of you coming through. So as I say, I am Karen Bessel. Call me Bess. And I am uh, XWI. So I used to, I was one of the founder members of the Cornwall Jailbird, the Bodmin Jailbirds in Cornwall. Uh, and that was before I moved to Brisbane five years ago. My mum is still very much part of that WI and is now on the county board. And mum and I had this crazy idea to create this program of events while you guys were in lockdown. It started off with just me and mum painting together. And then I was like, well, can I do one for Bodmin WI? And then it just snowballed into this big thing. And now you've got 20, uh, sorry, 12 fabulous events. I know you've already had um, Michelle from Kerno Pilates. You, this week, didn't you, um, on Thursday, you had the fabulous um, couch choir, which, were, which is incredible. Um, I actually couldn't make it, that was last night, for, or was it the night before for me, because that was at midnight. Um, but uh, I came on and I did it when I woke up in the morning. So uh, that was fantastic. Uh, you've also had, what else have you had? Um, some scrapbooking, which has been fun. And obviously me, and there was one more, I think, can't remember. But I know you've got um, a bar class coming up, which is a bit of exercise. You've got a fabulous speaker with Naomi Burden, um, who is a life coach and mentor. You have got, what else have you got coming up? You've got some yoga, I think, coming up as well. You've got lots of things, um, which is fantastic. So do take opportunity, do enjoy the opportunity that this Cornish Connect series is bringing you into the fabulous comfort of your home, okay? I'm just one of them and I'm here because I know some of you ladies couldn't do it during the day because obviously you work and that's fair enough. So I volunteered my crazy self to come up, get up at 4am, actually I got up at quarter past three um, and so if I am looking a bit bleary eyed, I apologise. Okay, I can see some of you have come on. So welcome to Gillian. Welcome to Linda from Aluggan. Welcome to Sylvia. I knew you were coming, Sylvia. Thank goodness for that. From Crowless and Ludgevin. We've got Sue Edwards here. Hello, Sue. I'm guessing that's my auntie. We've got Tracy Garvey. Um, Angela, hello and welcome. Scarlett, hello and welcome. And Lucy from New New Newquay. Welcome, welcome. So we've got a bit of a two camera setup. I can chat to you here, right in this camera. And then I've got the second camera set up here. It was a bit of a technical nightmare because normally my fabulous husband is always at hand. Well, he still had to be at hand because I, I live. So if you can imagine a main road, my house is on one side, my studio's on the other, big road in between. So I come over at 3.30, all ready to go, bustle over, all warm, set up all my lights, put my computer up, get it all going. Couldn't get the Wi-Fi going. Oh, couldn't get the password. Try one password. Eh. Try two passwords. Eh, eh. Oh, God. All right, what am I going to do? Do I phone? No, don't want to phone because everybody's asleep in the house. So, okay, go back, cross the road, go up, go, David, don't know what the password is. Anyway, sorted that, came back, 
and then I still couldn't get things going. I just couldn't get the two cameras to link, the microphone, oh, technology ladies. It gets to us all, doesn't it? But anyway, we fight through it. And I hope you're keeping yourself well. I know lockdown is starting to ease off for you guys. I mean, you're a long way out of the woods, I appreciate, but things are starting to change. My my middle sister is um, an office admin in a primary school. She's gone back to school. They've got a few 50 kids, I think, at the moment. Um, certainly, we're starting to get those cogs turning. Look, Australia is a couple of weeks ahead of you. Um, our kids have been back to school for two weeks now. And certainly, whilst things are very different, and everywhere you go in shops, obviously, there's the crosses and the distance. Uh, you have to sanitize wherever we go. We are starting to get some semblance of new normal. Um, I had some friends over, some girlfriends over last night, which was lovely. No, mum, I didn't have too much wine, so it's not going to be a car crash today. Actually, I only drank two glasses, and then I'd had enough and had a cup of tea. Um, and maybe that was psychologically, psychologic, psychological that I knew I was going to be with you today. So, chit chat. I do a lot of that. You'll get used to that. So, if you are new, welcome to your first experience. If you are returning, welcome back. If you are one of my lovely ladies that will watch on the replay, because I know there is some Australian friends that are going to catch this on Saturday, well, it's Saturday morning, but I mean in the proper hours of Saturday morning, not at 4 a.m., then welcome to you too. Obviously, if uh, you get stuck today, ladies in Cornwall, um, and you get a little bit frustrated, then just stop. Just enjoy a wine and a Friday night and a natter and a watch. And you can do this then on the replay because you'll be able to pause it, okay? Um, so don't get overwhelmed. I'm not here to make you feel like you can't paint. I'm not here to make you feel like, oh God, I'm so rubbish. Um, I'm here to uh, really give you a pleasurable experience, to give you a chance to try something new. Certainly when we started this with my mum back probably 10 weeks ago now, my mum had never painted anything really other than a bathroom wall. And she was full of self-doubt and self-confidence issues about whether she could be an artist. And what the hang, what is an artist? Someone that, and actually, yes, people like me have done training, but it's not really about training. It's about passion and about having the the courage to have a go. That's all I'm asking you guys to do. So if you can give me a one, are you ready and do you have courage to have a go? Two, I'm ready, but I'm a little bit nervous. Three, someone strong armed you into this and you don't actually want to be here, but you're here anyway. Or four, I'm just watching, happy watching, and maybe after I've watched, I might have a go in later. That will just give me an idea of how you're all going. Oh, we've got beautiful Naomi in. Well, you'll sit, you'll have the pleasure of her company in a couple of weeks' time. She is fantastic. She has amazing insights, ladies, that will give us all strength and empowerment. So uh, thanks, Naomi. We've got Carolyn Stone. Love the last session. Thanks, Carolyn. Mum's ready but not sure. <laughs> Linda's ready but not sure. <laughs> Lucy's got a firm one. Go for it, Lucy. That's what we like to hear. If I'm I, if I'm a four, uh, if I'm a a 4 a.m. and a firm one, then I expect at 7 a.m. at 7 p.m. with a couple of wines, you guys can be a bit better than that. Okay, let's see who else have we got. Uh, make sure, hello, Angela, welcome, welcome. So, are we ready? We're, we're ready, we're sort of ready. Some of us are ready. Angela's a four, that's fine, Angela. Watch, enjoy, feel the vibe. By the end of it, I'm like those awful sticky bugs that you get on a walk when you're in Cornwall and they go all over the bottom of your trousers and you can't pick them off. Once I get a hold of you, there's no letting go. <laughs> it's kind of a scary thing, but that's the way best rolls. All right, what do we need? You need some paints. Now, I've said this to you. I did a little pre-video um, explaining what you need. You can use watercolor. You can, in fact, that's the next question I need to ask you, all right? Well, there's two questions. One, I would love to know where you're calling in from. Now, last time I did this, I had places in Cornwall that I didn't even know existed. So even though I'm wearing my beautiful pasty earrings, please note, even at 4 a.m., I can still feel the calling and look, a bit of Cornish tartan in my hair. That's with love to you guys. 
Um, yes, so I didn't have a clue where half of them was, but I would love to know where you're calling in from. I know Pam is in Bodmin, Naomi's in Bodmin. I know we've had a Nuki and a Ludgeman and a Crowless. So let me know where you're calling in from because it's great for all of us. All of you ladies can see all the comments at home as well. And it's great for you all to see where you're all calling in from, from the WI. Connect, that's the point people. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing, it would be great for me to know what you are going to use <coughs> tonight. Are you using, so let's get a little uh, survey thing going again. One, acrylics. Two, watercolors. Three, pencils, colored pencils or, yeah, colored pencils. Four, textures in Australia, felt tip pens in England. And five, well, you'll have to write what it is. Chalk pastels, oil pastels, or maybe you're just using like a drawing pencil. Let me know what you are so I can keep, uh, keep track. Mum's using acrylics. Gillian, welcome from Shropshire. Big love. That's a big journey. Fantastic. My dad was born in Shropshire. Don't know it from a bar of soap, really, other than it's very pretty and been there twice. But um, we've got watercolours, okay? Truro with felt pens, okie dokie. Scarlet, I'm not in Cornwall, I'm in Birmingham. Well, you are very welcome. Ah, who else have we got? The Roach Rockers, Sue Edwards. Ah, so it's not my Auntie Sue. Ah, sorry, Sue. You wouldn't believe, but my auntie is also called Sue. So um, there you go. Who knew that? There's two of you. Actually, she lives up in Torbay. Uh, we've got watercolours. We have got one, two, three. What did I say for three? Uh, we, coloured pencils, I think. So Scarlett, your coloured pencils by the sound of it. Okie dokie. All right. For anybody using felt tip pens or coloured pencils, I suggest you get a drawing pencil to do the drawing um, outline. Okay. If you're using watercolours, watercolours are much thinner than acrylic. So when we do our drawing outline, please use your colour sparingly because watercolour will not cover over those lines like acrylic. It's not as thick, yeah? You'll get some beautiful results, mine, but just use when we draw, because we draw with paint, and I should say, watercolour people, if you really are too scared to draw with paint, then you can do a pencil line as well. But the only, I'm not going to say problem, there's never a problem, it's just something we haven't discovered the answer to. No, the only consistent or consideration is that um, because watercolors are thin you can see the line in behind but that's fine but I just want to let you know okay we've got Staffordshire and I'll be using watercolors thank you Lynn Tracy Garvey I'm in Lancashire and I'm using watercolor crayons wow never used them before neither have I I've used watercolor pencils but never a crayon and that's interesting because how does a wax crayon become, because wax and water normally repel, don't they? Not that science is my strong point. Um, but anyway, who knows? So if you're using those watercolour crayons or pencils, then you should be able to layer colours. So you should be fine tonight. So we've got a variety, really, not many on the acrylic. Well, I'm using acrylic, but acrylic can act like watercolour. It depends on how much water you play with it, all right? So we'll work through it gently, I'll massage you gently, and I'll take you on a beautiful road of creativity. Now, I have turned this light off because I have a lot of glare and bounce. Um, I'll show you what I mean, I'm just gonna turn it round. So when I need to, I'll put it on and brighten it up, but you do get a bit of glare, actually it doesn't look too bad. What you can see here are some patchy lines, and if I, can you hear that noise? This is me upcycling a canvas. So, you know, we've all been in lockdown and yes, the shops in Australia are open right now, but I'm a big believer in using what you've got at home, materials to color with or materials to color on. So if you've only got household paints, does that stop you from doing a, a painting? Hell no. You just do approach it in a different way. When I paint orange, if you haven't got orange, paint blue. You know, ultimately, these things shouldn't be a barrier to stop us going out. It's a bit like saying, and look, you can tell from my 
svelte figure that um, exercise isn't a high priority. I do enjoy it. I do try and keep healthy. But, you know, I've got a twin sister who's an iron woman and I am not like my twin sister. But um, ultimately, a barrier is, you know, money. A barrier to exercise can be I don't belong in a gym or a club or whatever. But we've all got legs. We've all got arms. We can all do what we can physically within the realms of what we got. And what we have learned in lockdown is we can always find something to do a bicep curl somewhere. All right. It's a bit like that for art. So if you're here, let's get started, I would say. So hopefully you have got um, your basics. So I'm just going to tip some water because that's really... So I've just got a basic collection of brushes. And when I do these sip and paints, I have two square brushes and two round brushes. If I put them there, you'll be able to see. So that's what I'm going to be using today. If you only have one brush, that's okay. I've just caught sight of myself and I can see my bags in my... You know, uh, that's, the, that's the four o'clock look. Sorry, peeps. Um, yeah, so you need four brushes, colours-wise. Now, um, I don't know if you can see the tin mine up there. I've put it up on the wall now. But the tin mine, you've probably seen already. Uh, blues, orange, red, green, yellow, white and kind of a hot pink. Um, if you haven't got exactly those colors, don't worry. But if you, if you want to match them so that they go side by side, then we're gonna kind of go with that, okay? Um, other than that, you'll need a face cloth or something, uh, an old rag just to wipe your brush on because it's really important when you change colors, you wash your brush out really well and then wipe it down. Okay. Give me a thumbs up. I'm just going to get rid of that weird box that's popped up. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Tell me some love that you're ready to go because I am ready to start painting. I am just going to open up. It's not a wine. Shame to say I've got myself a Red Bull, <laughs> but that's okay. That'll keep me going for the an hour and a half. Let's start painting, people. Wasn't Emma Mansfield good with your couch choir? She's fabulous. Gorgeous friend. Love her to bits. And she did a fabulous job. Like I say, because I knew I was getting up here this time in the morning, there was no way I was getting up, staying up till midnight, so I couldn't do that. Um, and I missed her. But I did go on the replay, which is fantastic. These Facebook Lives are brilliant because you can always go on someone's site, go onto their videos. So if you look, you know, where where the um, index is on the side, go down to videos, then you can watch things on the replay. All the videos are there if they save them. Okay, so I am going to be painting, uh, drawing with a little bit of blue. So I've dipped my thin brush into some blue, and then I've dipped it in the water just to make it nice and soft. Now, because mine is an upcycled canvas, there is texture on here, which means my brush isn't gonna glide as beautifully as it did with the, um, tin mine. So just bear that in mind. Now everybody at home, you all might have slightly different canvases. Some might be um, rectangular. Mine is a very square canvas today. Doesn't really matter, okay? If you can't fit in all of the houses and all of the bits and bobs, don't do them, all right? Don't do them. You just do what you can. If you only want to put one in, put one in, all right? Okay. So our horizon is not going to be... So I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is put a little dot here and go across, put a little dot here, and that's my halfway mark, okay? You guys do that too. I know you can't see very well. Now, my halfway mark on the vertical, obviously, is the easel, and then I'm just going to put a little dot at the bottom. That's going to help us navigate just a little bit, all right? Ready to go. Good job. We've got Alfred, Diane from Perinon... Perinon... No. Well, I want to say that proper Cornish, but I... Not quite sure. Perina, no. We've got Sylvia got our wine and ready to go. Brilliant. Brilliant. We're all ready to go. Love that. Okay, so we've got our halfway mark. Now, I want to come up probably, look, if you had a rectangular canvas, you could probably come up much higher than I can. But can you see, I don't have a huge amount of space and I want to put in my um, harbour scene. So I'm probably going two centimetres, two centimetres above. 
If you've got a rectangular space, I think two centimeters is about right anyway. So uh, the way to do straight lines, ladies, for those of you that have not painted with me before, is you put a dot on one side, you put a dot on the other side, and it's like playing tennis or having a good game of golf. You, you sight the ball where you want to go, boom, and off it goes. In, in, in technique, in practice, very different. So I'm just going to stand in front of my canvas. Here we go. Deep breath and over I go. Now you want it to be semi-straight. Does it matter if it has a little wobble? Nah, doesn't matter. The only, the only person who's going to get frustrated today is you. I'm not. I know you're going to do amazing things. I've just realised that me supping is right next to my mic. That might have sounded a bit rude, so I apologise. Uh, hello, Helen from Beaches and Cream WI and Yuki. Helen, I have to say, when I saw Emma Mansfield's uh, lost, uh, The Singing from the Couch, and I saw you pop up with Beaches and Cream, I thought... Because we, I was one of the WI, the Bob and Jailbirds WI, I was one of the founder members when we first started it. Literally, I was in the meetings um, working it all out before we even started. It was so fun. And But I wasn't in the very first meeting. And the girls who were in the first meeting had already decided on the name Bobman Jailbirds, which I think, you know, is quite relevant for obviously the jail, for the Bobman Jail. But Beaches and Cream, what a lush name for a WI. That, that floats my boat. I've got visions of your WI hall decked in cat kits and, cat kits and bunting. I want to see three tier cake stands every time I walk in there. And when I come back, and I will come back, mum, I promise, um, I'm coming over to your WIR and I want it to be amazing because that's my vision of beaches and cream. Okie dokie, so that is our harbour line. Now, we, I want you to do, I am using, if you hadn't seen the, the promos before, I'm using the beautiful Cornish artist, Cornish Bird in the Sticks. I'm using her painting of the harbour scene as an inspiration. Now, we are going to do the same nighttime colours so they sit together. But it's quite graphic and we'll still be having that black line, okay? So we're going to do, if you've ever been to, um, Mum, what's that, um, what's that harbour called that we used to go and jump off the, um, jump off the pier? The one that's got that really nice, it's really small harbour and you, we used to get the paddle boat. What was that called, Mum? That place there has this kind of harbour. I can't think what it's called. Uh, it's on the south coast, it's near Lou, Pe begins with P. Anyway, mum will tell me in a minute. Okay, so we're going to do the, um, we're going to do the edge of this harbour and I'm going to do it in scallop shapes. So I've got one, two, like the letter C ladies, yeah? One, two, three takes me down to the bottom of my canvas. And then I want that to go right across and out the other side. So that's just kind of one big curve and out the other side. Polpero, no, it wasn't Pol Pol Polpero. Polkeris, my husband's still watching. Go to sleep, David. Polkeris, that's the one. Anyway, this, is, this will be that kind of view. You know where you have a harbour wall there and then you have that swooping um, harbour. Polkeris, that's the one. Although this painting has a second thing there and Paul Keris doesn't, but anyway. Okay, so that's my swoopy line. Can you get that one in, ladies? Good job. Okay, now on top of this swoopy line here, we are going to draw our harbour wall. Now, it's going to, you see where your halfway line is, where you first plotted? That's going to be the bottom of our harbour wall, so go straight across. straight across about uh, as long as my hand. So 12 centimeters, something like that. Obviously, if you're using a, uh, a more na an, a narrower canvas, it won't be exactly 12 centimeters. Now I want you to do an angled line there. And then we're gonna bring it right back across the canvas this way. So you've got an angled line there. How's that showing up? That's showing up okay? Good job. Yeah. Now we're going to copy that shape over on the right-hand side, 
but it's not going to go as far into the painting, okay? It's not going to go as far. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to find my lines, and I'm going to start off by doing the angle, and I want to try and make sure that they are on the same horizontal line. So that's my harbour line on that side. The moment we look like we're painting the White Cliffs of Dover. <laughs> So gorgeous ladies of the WI, I know how significant it is because what would today be on a normal year in a normal world, it would be your Royal Cornwall show. And I know how important that is to you ladies. Um, I was part of, well mum's obviously on the county board, but uh, we had so much fun with the WI, the Bomb and Jailbirds entering our rather um, what's the, how do I say it politely? Well, we tried hard. <laughs> we tried hard. Oh my goodness. Actually, we didn't do bad. We didn't do bad, did we, mum? We didn't do bad. Okay. Now, we're going to go back to the water now, and I want you to, we're going to create three sets of curves, okay? So, follow the shape. One. If anybody thinks I'm going too fast, then just leave me a message in the chat that says, slow down, Bess. We like to do it directly. One, two, three. So we've got the sound. Blue, blue, blue. And one more. Now, the, the last one is just a thin one. There we go. Beautiful. I'm frozen. Am I frozen now? Let me know, Mum. Am I frozen? Doo, 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 doo. The reason why I keep looking up is my computer's up high, which is where I can see all the messages. Uh, hopefully, I'm not frozen. Technology. I'm going to have to say, keep pedaling to the person on the internet. Hopefully, I'm not frozen. Hopefully, you're seeing this. No, I'm not frozen. Good, good, good. Okay, so this is the main part of our drawing down here. We're now going to sketch in the boat. We've got two boats, and you are going to get um, lines that overlap, but don't panic, okay? So the, the first boat, the large boat, is coming down the bottom here, and it's sat in the sand, if you can imagine that, and we're going to draw like a, um, a cup shape or a big smile like that, just nice and loose, doesn't matter where it tips or sits, nice and loose, just a cuppy kind of shape. I love Royal Cornwall. I love, what do I love about Royal Cornwall? I love the, the Royal Cornwall um, main ring. My dad was one of those bowler hat dudes who used to uh, walk with the cows. Okay, in the, in the cup shape, in the center of that cup shape, you're going to put a line down. I'm going to have to stand a little bit ahead. And we want it to be slightly at an angle. Okay, and from that line, you're going to cup out and cup that way. And this is as if that uh, boat is just resting in the sand, just tipped to the side. Okay, so yeah, my dad was um, a bowler hat dude. He used to do all the farming bits because, you know, we're a farming family. And um, I worked for Bombing College as the head of marketing when I was there for a couple of years. So I used to be at the Bombing College stand. My mum obviously was in the WI, and before that she was with Jeffries, the estate agent. So we used to go to the Royal Cornwall every year without fail. Okay, so that's a one boat. We're going to do a second boat here. We want it to kind of interlock. So try and get it. You want it touching the sand, but we just want it popping up in behind there. If you can't manage that and you can't get it to pop up in behind, don't worry too much, you can just have it next to it. But if you can get it to pop out, and if you're not sure how to do it, paint right through that boat if you need to, to get the right shape. You're gonna overpaint these anyway, so don't panic too much. Then we're gonna do the center line, and once again, we curve out that way and curve out that way. So these are looking direct onto the boat, yeah? You're looking front on, front on onto those boats. 
Gillian, am I meant to be using paint or pencil? Using paint watercolour at the moment, that's fine. Um, when I paint with watercolours, I draw with paint, uh, Gillian. It really doesn't matter. Um, if you make a mistake, ladies, look what you can do. So let's say you it's all too blurry and the lines are too confusing for you. Just get a wet brush, look, and I just paint over the lines I want to take away, get my cloth, and you just use it like an eraser. Now, if you're using paper, then obviously just be a bit more gentle because it, you don't want to rub the paper. Um, so yeah, Gillian, don't worry about using paint. I, if I was doing watercolours, I would use paint myself, all right? Um, I don't, I very rarely um, sketch things out before I paint anything with pencil. I just sketch with paint. It's, a, uh, it's something that you, at school, you're taught to draw first and then paint. But actually, when you go to university, they don't even let you have a pencil unless you're doing a drawing class. So you suddenly get to a point where you go, oh, actually, when I draw, I can draw with paint. Of course you can. Because if you make a mistake, you just cover it over with a different color paint, okay? So it's a little bit less forgiving with watercolor, I understand, but the colors that we are painting are quite bold. Now, when you're using watercolors, when you want to do blending, you use a very a high concentration of water to get that wateriness. Today, you'll be using your water watercolors with less water, so you'll have a wet brush, you'll go into your watercolour to get the brush full of colour and then you'll paint it and it will come on nice and thick and nice and bright, all right? What I would suggest, Gillian, is maybe just have a piece of paper on the side so that before you start painting your colours, you can just test how much paint's coming out. That's a really good tip, all right? Um, C&L got well placed at Royal Cornwall show last year. Is that Crowlett and Ludgeman? Well done, Crowlett and Ludgeman. We did, uh, we did one where we thought we were uh, Heston Blumenthal. We did, our first year with Royal Cornwall, the bombing jailbirds decided in our crazy night with too much uh, of the old vino to make all of our savouries uh, taste of sweet and all of our sweet taste of savouries. But I think it was a little bit of a stretch, really. I don't think they were quite ready for the Heston moment. <laughs> we didn't get a bad mark, but it was... Oh, God, we laughed. Okay, so that's those boats. And now we want to draw a few more. So we're going to have three boats over here. Banana shape, one. Banana shape, two. And I'm, look, I'm not being precious with this. I'm just popping them in. And banana shape, three. Okay, three boats there. One boat over here, which is a bit of a challenge because there's lots of lines happening, but we want to mark it in while we're doing it. Let, while we're doing our drawing, let's just mark it all in and then we know where we are, don't we? So that's the boat there. Just checking that you can see that. Yes, you can. And then there's some tiny boats in the distance. So we need to get that kind of um, perspective, don't we? So there's one there. There's one there. And there's one there. This is obviously down Falmouth Way somewhere where there's lots of boat action. Okay, I am now going to wash my brush. I want you to get a bit of white and mix it with a tiny bit of orange and a tiny bit of blue. And you should end up with a kind of light brown color. If you've got light brown in your palette, you can use the light brown that you've got, okay? Orange, tiny bit of blue, and white. So we want up, and this isn't a perfect brown, we just want to sketch with it, okay? We're going to sketch our Cornish cottages, our harbour cottages. And there's three of them up this side, and there's one on this side. So let's start with the one on this side. I'm going straight down, and then across. Now, the beautiful thing about Cornish cottages, as we all know, is that they are, there is very few of them that have straight walls. So you can have a right old wobble if you need to. Okay, there's my roof. And maybe you've got a, maybe you've got a Cornish house in mind. Maybe there's a thatch cottage down the road and you want to thatch yours. You change these up however you want, okay? This is really, really, really up to you. Okay, so that's my one on the right-hand side. Now, I want to shape these slightly differently. 
So I'm going to go for a tall, thin one as my last one on the right, on the left, sorry. Tall and thin. And put in the little roof. Then we're going to go with something a little bit wider. Just a little bit lower. And put in a roof. Now I'm doing your classic slant one side, slant the other side, shorter along the top. And then the last house on that side. So that's my three little cottages all put in like that. If you want to make them shorter and fatter, you can. I quite like them like that. We want to give it a bit of character, don't we? Perrin and Ho won the cup for the first time. Yay! Good job. There's nothing like feeling like a winner. I entered, did I, I can't remember, Mum, did I enter the art? I think I wanted to, and I don't know if I did. Um, for the three years that I was part of the Bomb and Jailbirds in those early days, I was always the one that painted the backdrops, which I used to love. Okay, so that's our drawing done. So let's get on with painting. Okay, we're going to start off with doing our um, sky, okay? And I'm going to start off and ask you to get some white on your brush and paint a white circle. Now, you can decide this is going to be my setting sun or rising sun. You can decide you might want to put it right down here if you want it a really deep set. You might want to put it over here. You decide where you want to put your sun. I've gone for right in the middle there, okay? But if you don't want to put it in the middle, reposition it. And if you want it to be a day scene, when I put the darker blue, then you, and if you want it to be a day scene, then you're just going to use white and yellow, and then you're going to make the background pale blue. I'm going for a darker color scheme because I want it to sit nicely with my tin mine. All right. Once I've done my yellow, I'm going to paint, uh, sorry, once I've done my white, I'm painting a circle of yellow around the outside. I'm going to keep on looking up because I just want to check to see if anybody's leaving me any questions or asking for help. So it's not that I'm being a bit weird. <laughs> I am a little bit strange. It is true. And bear in mind, I'm drinking Red Bull. So that's going to take me right off the scale, people. Okay, white and yellow. Now, don't wash your brush out. Pick up the orange and go outside your yellow and do your orange. So you, you might be able to see from there, you can, I'm just going to move the light off the canvas, that's better. You can just see, can't you, the, the bumps and the texture that I've got on that canvas. Is that yellow on top of the white? No, the yellow is around the white. I'm using colour pencils, do I need to rub out the ordinary pencil first? I wouldn't, Lucy, no. I mean, if you want to, you can. So if you really don't want that shining through, what I would do is get a rubber with the side of the rubber. Of course, I'm in an art studio and I can't find one. Hang on a minute. I'm sure I've got one. Here we are. Ooh. So you know how it's a bit like, this is quite a funny thing, actually. People don't understand the techniques of rubbers. It's a very complicated process. Um, if you rub using, I'll just make sure that you can see, if you rub using the end of a rubber, what happens is it pulls against the fibres of the paper and quite often that's when you pull the paper up and it tears or you start to ruckle the, pa the paper. And then if you're using watercolour afterwards, if you're using watercolour afterwards, it's a pain in the ass. So if you're using, um, what I would do when I'm uh, teaching the children especially, is when you've got a rubber like this, rub using the large flat side of the rubber and go across like that carefully and blow forward and uh, and obviously not at your partner's face if you're at the dinner table um, and you'll find it will leave some pencil on there and probably enough that you'll have those guidelines but um, it's much kinder so if you want to use a rubber then do if not I mean, it depends how precious you are. If you want to put this on the wall, then maybe that's what you want to do. If you just want to have a go and experiment, then um, maybe you can do it, leave that on. If you love it, paint it again. Paint it on a real canvas. 
No problem, Tracy. Awesome. Hopefully that's answered your question, Lucy. Please shout up. Don't be embarrassed. This is a safe place for you to ask questions. Nobody's going to go, oh, Tracy didn't know whether she could use a rubber. And actually it wasn't Tracy, it was Lucy. But anyway, okay, so I've done the orange. Now, I've dipped my brush back in the water and I'm now going to use the yellow and it's still got orange in it and I'm just going to go around the outside of that. So it's a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange and I'm just going around the outside. If you're using colour pencils, uh, this is for Lucy, you're going to need to, to, to colour one bit of pencil. So if you imagine these are lines where the coloured pencil is and that, so this is orange and this is yellow, you want to knit the colours together. And I might get a piece of paper and show you what I mean. Watercolour people, you should be okay with this. So you can, oh, sorry, I just knocked my camera. You can, um, watercolour people, you can blend it as much as you want. But what I would say with watercolour is if you overblend, then it's very difficult to keep on adding colour on top. So less is more. Okay, Lucy, or anybody else doing coloured pencil. When you're going round, so this is the yellow... And I start to do yellow around the outside. And if I'm using colour pencils, I colour mine quite scratchy. I'm going to bring that forward so you can see what I mean. So you can see that it's quite scratchy and quite loose. Yeah? And then, so if I'm doing a whole area of yellow, I'm just going to do mine super quickly. But I, I don't fill it in perfectly. Yeah? I leave some space and some air. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Can you see that? So it's like scribbly line. And the reason being, when I then go to do, um, when I then go to do the orange, I can softly colour through the yellow. Just going to bring that forward so you get an idea of what I mean. So I'm softly colouring through the yellow and you can see it finds the space on the paper where the yellow isn't and it lays the orange down. And that's how you blend with coloured pencils if they're not watercolours. Then the next colour, which is really orange, then I'll press harder and get that saturated colour that I want. But then you can see that I've gone from yellow... Ooh, find where the camera is. There you go. Can you see that? So that, that's how you blend with coloured pencils. You have to knit them together. All right, let's put that to one side. If you really get into this, the coloured pencils that I use are watercolour pencils. They are, I've, if you've done my classes before, you'll hear me rave about them. I have a set of these at home. I have a set of these here. I have a box of like 20,000. Um, I use them for the children. I use them for the adults. They are so fabulous at giving you great results. Okay, they're really worth the investment. Okay, now, <clears throat> for those of us that are doing a nighttime sky, if you're not doing a nighttime sky and you're doing daytime, let me know in the chat. And if you're doing daytime and not nighttime, this is, well, actually for nighttime as well, we want to now just blend the two lines there. So I'm using a slightly damp brush just to blend the yellow into the orange. If you find that you've lost your yellow by doing that, then just add a bit more to your brush. The idea is we want to get that lovely blending colour from yellow to orange. And I've just put a bit more and into white. So you just want it to go into that beautiful kind of um, bullet, you know, that beautiful blend. You can add as much or as little. So if yours is looking too pale and you want to punch it up, then add some deeper colour. If you want it to be brighter, add some deeper colour. If you want it to be softer, add a bit more white. Okay, from there, I'm dipping my brush into red and I'm going to do red on the outside of my orange. Exactly the same process. Going round the outside like this. Get that nice, lovely round. And then finally, if you've got pink, 
you can do a line of pink. If you haven't got pink, don't worry about it. Or <clears throat> um, you could add, well, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do red and white because you end up with baby pink. It's not the same as having a kind of cerise color. This is the color of pink that I've got. If I can show you that, it's like a hot pink. So if you haven't got that color, then maybe just stop at the red. Mind my little boat there. Okay, I'm just gonna wash my brush out. What replaces white? Hmm. Do you mean because you're using colored pencils, you haven't got a white? <clears throat> Well, you're going to have to just have yellow as your center. But later on, when we use white, Lucy, I suggest you let the paper be the white. Or you just use, if you've got colored pencils, and let, because I've got a white in my colored pencil set, um, but maybe you've got two colors of yellow. If you look at these, I've got, <coughs> let me just put that in front of that camera. If you look at those, I've got a golden yellow and a yellow, ye a bright yellow. So maybe you could use the gold, the bright yellow, this one here. Ooh, gosh, it's really hard when you're doing it backwards there. Maybe you could use this one as your palest color. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is you want the lightest color as your bullseye and you want to go out with the darkness. Okay, I want to soften off the orange and the red line. So I'm just using a uh, my wet brush just to go between those lines, again, just to stop that being a, a circular ring. And we just go round in concentric circles. If you're using pencils, then just take out the hard edges. You can keep the hard edges, which is fine. And actually, if you ever look at Cornish Bird in the Sticks, um, hers is, because she's a graphic designer, all of her artwork is um, graphic shapes and hard, hard lines. So if you want that look, then that's absolutely fine. But I'm just using her painting as inspiration um, and we're sort of taking our own take on it. So we're just using it as inspiration tonight. Good job. Okay, now if you get your big brush or if you're using pencils or textures, we're going to get, move on and we're gonna do the outside. We're gonna start with the dark blue from the outside corners. Now this, if you want to do a daytime scene, then this is going to be, you're not going to have done the red, you're just going to use yellow and white. And this will be a pale blue, like a day colour sky. Whereas we're doing a night colour sky, so I'm using a darker blue colour. And this will match our tin mine. I always start at the edges because in a minute we're going to put a bit of purple on our brush just to help the color transition from the dark blue to the red. I'm starting off with blue and I'm painting back towards my sun area. Like that. Try not to lose your little boat. It doesn't matter. I mean, you'll, you'll know vaguely where they are, but try not to lose them if you can. And come around this side, just above that house up there. bit tricky. I'm going to have to lift the top of my easel. Oh, my fingers are so... Oh, no, look what I've just done. I've just done a massive splodge in the middle of my sun because I was lifting up my easel. Never panic. <laughs> never panic if that happens. Just rub it off and repaint. It's never that much of a drama. When, when I teach the children, oh, my goodness, mom, miss, miss. They have a right panic. It doesn't matter. You can just repaint it. Worst case scenario, if you make mistakes like this and you're unhappy with them, is you wait for it to dry. Or in this case, in the studio, I have a hairdryer. So or you have these children that are almost bursting into tears. And then I get out my trusty hairdryer, give it a dry, 
and then we start off again, and all of a sudden they realize that actually it's not too much of a drama. Uh, okay, let me just get rid of that. You've got white, but it doesn't show up. Okay, Lucy, um, I would just leave it as yellow. Okay, don't panic too much. Um, and to make this darker, just add, so you've got something that's paler in the middle, add more orange as you go out so that you end up with a darker ring going out and that will make the inside look paler, okay? There are definitely some areas that we're going, like this one here is going to be a white colour, but you just need to switch up the colour of your house and just find something else in your pencils that you want to use. Uh, maybe like a pale brown. At the end of the day, it can be whatever we want, can't it? Okay, so I've done my blue, and now I'm going to dip it into some purple. And I want to add the purple round the outside. So I was going to lift that up. Round the outside of my sun. And don't be too heavy-handed with your purple. But purple is a blue, it, to make purple, it's blue and red mixed together. And so it adds a really nice transition. We use this with our tin mine as well. So I add the purple down, and obviously I don't want it to go straight from one color to another color like that. So once again, wet brush, just wash out the yellow, and you're gonna use a wet brush just to soften the color change. So you just create the blend between the two colors using that wet brush. It, you might need to add a bit of red onto your um, brush if you need to. It depends how quickly your um, paint is drying out. And you just want it to end up going into the darkness of the night. So it's like having that beautiful transition from the warmth into the dark. And that's something you're going to have to work out on your own painting. If you keep on picking up the dark blue and you go back in towards your sun, make sure you wash your brush, otherwise you'll make your sun really dark. So I'm just gonna add a bit more red there. So you don't wanna pull that darkness in at all. You don't wanna lose the brightness that you've just created, okay? Really important that you keep that ring of brightness that you've created. But we just wanna soften off the transition. So I'm, I'm using water. And where I need to, I'm adding a bit more paint. So I'm just adding a bit of purple there, just up towards those houses. And then it goes into the blue of the night sky. Add a bit more purple there. Got to wash my brush. And can you see when my purple's just gone a bit heavy there? I'm just going to get some more red and I'm just going to lay some red over the top. Now I might need to let this draw. Oh no, I didn't. That's good. If it doesn't, if it doesn't lay over the top, you we might need to come back to it later once it's dried off. I just want to add a bit of brightness. The, the, it's a very difficult thing, purple and blue, because it can turn into brown quite quickly. So you've got to, and if you really have made a muck, just go and get a bit of kitchen towel and just push it onto your wet area and just pull it up, pull the colour up. But if you did the tin mine, it's the same process we did for the tin mine. Are you leaving white around the sun? No, mum, I'm not. So I've got white in the very middle, and then I've literally blended. If I pull this, uh, if I pull this forward, look, I'm just going to lift the camera up and give you a close-up. Can you see that? So you can see there how I've blended that colour right through. Is that helpful? So that's how I've blended my colour, all right? Okay, I'm going to drop the camera now and put the easel back down on the ground. Is that helpful? Does that help? 
Hopefully that helps. I'm just going to get the camera back in the right position. Okay. Any more questions? That's our sky done until we come back and do some other little um, stars and things like that. And I am going to add a little bit more yellow, but I'm going to wait for it to dry. So let me know. Has anybody got any more questions about the sky before we move on? Hopefully you're all doing well. That's an hour. We've been going an hour. I said hour and a half picture. We are going too slow. Come on, ladies. We need to move it. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to talk through. So if you're still tinkering with your sky, that's okay. I'm going to show you the three color, the four colors. So essentially, we want this to be a gradient of blue. So my darkest blue is going to be here. Then I'm going to do these in different colors. And actually, this last one, I'm going to leave white or paint white because it's kind of the foamy bit moving in. So we've got dark blue, then another color, then another color, then white. Okay, and this is our beach. So I am literally going to start. You can make up whatever colors you want. Don't be too precious. So the color that's coming out of my tube, the um, I would say this is a like a navy blue or not navy. It's like aquamarine, like a dark blue. I'm going to use that as my second blue. So my second tier here, that is going to be that color. And I'm just, I'm not mixing it. I'm not changing that color. It's coming straight out of the tube and going straight on my canvas. If you're using colored pencils, you're going to need to, maybe you could go um, like purple, blue, green. So you could use a greeny color or you're going to have to put green and blue together and color one on top of the other, okay? And if you're doing colored pencils or textures, uh, sorry, felt-tip pens are exactly the same, in order to put one color on top of the other, another technique, which, um, so here's green and here's blue. Just make sure you can see that is what you call cross hatching. So you do this with felt tip pens or with pencils. Color your dominant color one way. Obviously you can do it once or you can do it twice. You can go the other way, other direction, and that's a cross hatch. And then you add in your blending color. So in this case I've got green, and then I add green in another direction. So I went, so I'll do it the opposite here. This direction first, at an angle, one direction. At an angle, the other direction. Let's say you wanted to make this a tone of green and green. And then I'm going to find, I've got another color green, which is a paler green. That's going to be my third tone. So I'm going to bring these up to the camera so you can see. Can you see that? So that's blending with colored pencils is very much a, um, a skill that you have to practice and learn. That top one is blue and green. That is green and green. So that's two colors of green. All right. So and the other option is to obviously do flat where you don't um, put too much pressure. So you color in with flat color like this. And then you get your second color. And I actually would still go in a different direction. And you put a second layer of color over the top. And that's another way of blending. And that's what you call flat blending. Let's see if I can get to that to the camera. There you go. Okie dokes. So that's your little blending for pencils or for felted pens. You cannot lay color over with felted pens. The only way you can blend with felt tip pens is to do the hashing and the, and the knitting together, okay? You cannot color over. You, it will saturate your paper so much it will tear. Okay, so I'm, I'm painting in my blue C here. So that is my first run of water. 
this is where you can if you weren't happy with your curvy shapes you can just do a little bit of tweaking and amend them oh wobbled there going to bring that line down it's pretty tricky because I'm painting on this recycled canvas and it's got so many bumps on it how's that looking beautiful I'm happy with that anybody got any questions everybody's looking good awesome awesome okay this color here I want it to be this part of the sea Obviously, it's the darker you go out at night time, the deeper and darker the water. So I want this color of the ocean to be the same color I used, this blue and purple together, yeah? So I'm actually going to mix it on the canvas. So I'm going to try and create blue and purple together, and hopefully what you'll end up with is... You can't really tell where the sea starts and the sky starts. The sea finishes and the sky starts. But we're going to put a black line over it later. But I just want to have that kind of myth, kind of um, magical moment at night time where you can't see. Now, here in front of this sky, in front of this um, sun, where these boats are, I'm going to leave that channel with a little bit showing because we're going to put some um, reflection of the sun later. So I'm just going to make sure that I leave a bit of a channel so I can put some sun reflection. The setting sun, we're just going to put a bit of that in the water. So I'm just going to make sure I go around that and leave that nice and pale. And I'm just going to paint next to the blue here, next to this, I guess they're waves, aren't they? I'm actually just using the neat purple so that it looks very different to the blue that I painted before. And you can see that shape change. Need a bit more blue. I'm going round my boats. And I'm just mixing the blue and the purple, literally with my brush, I'm just mixing it on the canvas. So you can see I've left that bit of um, white showing. That's where we're going to put a bit of um, the sun reflecting down on the water. And so I don't want it to be too dark because otherwise the color won't show up. Going round my boats, and it is a mixture of blue and purple, and it's the same tone that we've got from round the sun, really. So Friday night in lockdown, hey? Wow. I had my girlfriends over last night. It was very nice. Some ladies from school. Haven't seen them in a while. Um, we've kind of seen each other all virtually, really, via Facebook. Thank goodness for Facebook. It's kept us all in touch. Which has been lovely, I have to say. I've really enjoyed it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that patch there. I'm going to leave it because otherwise it's going to be... Um, 
it's going to be too mucky if I colour over it. I'm going to shine this light on and I know it glares, but hopefully that's going to show you the difference. So this is much deeper. You can see where that deepness changes. On my picture, I'm just going to come closer. You can see on my picture, you can see where this line is blue and then the deeper line is where the purple is, yeah? So you can really see that transitional change. And that bit there, I have just left nice and white because we're going to put the yellow in. Beautiful. Okay, then my next colour here, I'm going to go with a, a teal colour. So you can use whatever blue that you have to hand. And we're again following that shape. You're going to need to go round your boat now, guys. I do hope you share these, um, your paintings and your drawings with your WI, let them know, because, you know, like I say, even though some of your WI members might not have either, maybe they were too scared to give it a go, and you can say, no, it's not that scary, Karen, it's fabulous. Um, you know, you can share it with them afterwards. I'm going to save the picture, so they may have something else on on a Friday night, and so they weren't able to join, but you can send them the link, um, you create art at home, and let them know that in the videos, this picture, as we, as and if this is your first time painting and you really enjoy it and you want to do the tin mine, the tin mine is there. You can pick it up and you can paint that one to go with it. All right. So share the love. Let your friends, your other WI members, anyone else, friends, family, whoever. I started, I mean, I've been teaching art for um, 15 years. Uh, sort of left corporate marketing and went back. I did an art degree, left went, left corporate marketing when I had the kids um, and started teaching children and then adults and then aged care, done them all. Kindy. And um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love my job. It's fantastic. But I started teaching online because obviously my studio closed because of COVID. And... Um, I, yeah, I'm, even though my studio will reopen, I will continue to do it online. It's been fantastic. You know, I, I'm, I've been, I've taught, this week I taught a lady in New York who joined me for one of my lunchtime sessions. So every lunchtime, around 12, 30, 1 o'clock, I do a little 15 minute, 20 minute little drawing exercise, bit of a mental health break, give you a little bit of a story and give you a little drawing exercise that uh, sort of relates to that story. And that's really just to let you with a cup of tea, just take a deep breath. I am absolutely 100% committed to not returning to the life I had before this, which was honestly sometimes working stupid hours, feeding my children out of a plastic dinner box um, as I take them to their clubs. And I've said to the kids and to my husband and to myself, I am never doing that again. Um, now, this is a worry. It's saying I have low battery. Hang on. I, I have got it all, all in. I'm just going to check my um, check my connections a minute, peeps, because it's saying I have low battery, which is a worry. Oh, yeah, there is definitely one that's not plugged in. Gosh, can you imagine that in the middle of this? So I'm on top of my table right now, plugging you in. Don't know why I'm shouting louder. I've got a microphone. Okay. Oh! That said low battery. That's scary. All right. Okay, so that's my second color. And now I am going to um, mix. So my, my brush still has a bit of blue in it, which is fine. And I'm going to paint that last area with white. So this is your frothy water's edge. 
So if it does have a bit of blue in it, that's okay. If your blue line shines through, that's okay. If you're using watercolours, then I would just get a very pale blue colour. Yeah? If you want to leave some of your paper showing, you can. I'm just going to go around the edge of my boats. Woo! That's too much paint. That's just blobbed all over the floor. Good job. We're in the studio. So I'm going to paint this white and then I'm going to look at the, my computer and see if anybody's left me any questions or comments. You probably haven't because you're working so hard, people. You fabulous ladies. Gosh, I miss the WI. I have started something similar here. No, it's not similar. It's only me. Um, so in Australia, there is a group called the CWA, which is the Country Women's Association. And I did join them when I first moved to Brisbane because I miss WI so much. But um, it's in the city. It was a pain in the bum. There wasn't one close by. Uh, you know, and the, what's lovely about your local WI is it's kind of local with the local ladies, isn't it? So you're, you're socializing with people in your town. And you know what I used to love? I was socializing with people that were outside of my friendship group sometimes, which made it just really nice. You had a whole group of ladies that you wouldn't necessarily gravitate to, but actually filled, filled my bucket really, I found it lovely. Um, and, and I absolutely loved the whole cross-generational um, learning thing. You know, I was doing beading and all these wonderful uh, new hobbies that I'd never tried and probably wouldn't on my own. Okay, I'm just checking. Camera on the main canvas has frozen. Okay. Is that better? Hopefully that's better. I just have to keep flicking it. Um, so I've done the white bit around the edge. I've done all my blue now. And I am going on to uh, the yellow. Hopefully that hasn't frozen. Um, Mum, hopefully that hasn't frozen. If I start yellow, so you can hear me talking yet, I'm starting the yellow. Please tell me if you can see the yellow. It's on now. Okay. I think it's probably just the internet connection. It just probably dips in and dips out. So apologies, ladies. Uh, if you, uh, you've probably heard that whole world and his wife are all using the internet at the moment. It's held together with sticky tape, I tell you. Bubble gum and sticky tape, they say. The world and his wife, there's people using the internet that have never used it before. So it's a, uh, it's challenging for it, I think. And I have to say, Australia has the worst internet speed <laughs> ever. It's like, honestly, some third world countries have better internet speed than we do. It's terrible. When I first started doing these sip and paints in the studio, when lockdown started, I was just using uh, mobile internet. And it was so, 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 so bad. It dropped in and dropped out. If you go back and watch any of my early pictures, uh, any of my early paintings, <laughs> it's a car crash quite often. It's hilarious. Um, it's hilarious. And so uh, I had to go and buy a separate modem and get myself all set up over here. Now, you will discover, as you can see from me painting here, that when you have blue in your brush and you paint yellow, then you're going to get green. Now, I'm not worried about that. I'm not stressed at all about that because it's nighttime. And actually, I want to put some shadow into my yellow. I don't want it to be absolutely bright yellow as a beach. So I do want it to be slightly darker. So I'm going to make that brown color again, which is adding in some blue and adding in some orange. And that's orange is the key factor to making brown. So once I've done my yellow, I'm just adding some brown on the outside of my yellow just to make my yellow not as bright. Take down the color, make it more of a gritty color.
and I'm painting in lots of different strokes. So it's got lots of texture, I'm not just doing it in one direction. I'm sort of flicking my wrist and getting it painted and covered in lots of directions. And you'll see as you keep on standing back from your painting, do you want more color or less color? If you want more yellow, add more yellow. You might want to add a bit of orange to your beach. You can do that. Add it straight to the canvas. Or if you're using color pencils, just add a little bit over the top. So you can play around with that color as much as you want. You might want to add a bit of white to pale it up if you want to. Just adding a bit of orange there at the bottom. So really just you create the color of the beach that suits you. But you don't want it to be that bright, bright yellow because obviously it's a nighttime, it's a nighttime scene. Um, as it dries, we can always add a bit of yellow afterwards. Okay, while I've got that color brown, I'm going to use that color brown to paint. Um, you know, in uh, Padstow, they have those half, 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 half and half. Actually, it's not just in Padstow, but those Cornish houses where half of it is like dark brick and the bottom is white. There's definitely one in Padstow, um, just up from the customs house. I remember that one. So I'm just using the same color as I used for the sand. I'm just using that to paint in that half half building. I'm just painting in that top half of the building. I'm going to switch my brush because it's a bit big. And just to keep the same color, color palette, we've talked about this before where you need to create balance on your paintings. So that color there I'm going to use for one of my boats. And we will add detail in our boats later, but right now let's just lay out the color. As I start to paint in these houses, we're just going to lay out the color. So that's that one. This next one I'm going to call Betty's house. Auntie Betty, my great Auntie Betty, lived in Mausel with her husband. Um, she was my nanny, nanny sister, and she lived in a fabulous, he was the um, policeman for Mausel for many years, ex-RAF, and they lived up on the hill, and I have such beautiful memories of their house because it was, I want to say, number two pink cottages. And so it was, it's probably listed that they have to keep it pink. I'm not sure if that's true. But it was always pink in my lifetime. It probably still is pink. Auntie Betty and Uncle Edwin have sadly passed away many years ago now, probably far more than that, six, seven years ago. But anyway, Auntie Betty, as in lots of little Cornish villages, have these beautiful pink houses, don't they? Love them! I always, she had the most amazing house. It was a tiny little cottage with a beautiful view over Mara's Iron. Um, and in the back garden, she had um, this beautiful fish pond with these great big goldfish. It always seemed very ex exotic. It was a tiny little cottage, but it was just so pretty and beautiful. I really, really loved it when we used to go there. Okay, then the one on the end is going to be a white color, but I just want to knock it off white so that it stands out. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of blue. You could use gray. And I'm just going to paint it in so it's just not white. So I've just added a tiny bit of blue just to create that kind of limestone color, I guess you'd call it. So that's that cottage there. And obviously we'll paint these um, the once the the body of it's dry, we'll then just do our little windows and our door. I'm just doing the bottom of that cottage, the first one, with some white. And then this one over here is going to be white as well. Again, for those of you that don't have white, just find a grey 
or something like that or a pale blue or whatever you've got you know what a Cornish cottage is with the color of a Cornish cottage well you can make it up if you don't want it to be that color then you can cut make whatever color house you want all right it's not it's really not that essential that it is exactly the same color as what I'm doing Okay, so that's the base coat of my cottages. And now I want to do the roofs. And this is where you decide, do you want to have a thatch roof or do you want it just to be a slate roof or a tiled roof? I'm gonna do these just in gray, so. That one there. I wish I brought my over my glasses now. Going to make this one slightly darker tone. So I just added it, to make it a darker tone, I've just added in a tiny bit more black. Just see if I've got any messages on tippy toes here. Fuchsia Cottage, my mum said. Yeah, it was called Fuchsia Cottage. It was a beautiful place. And then same over here. Uncle Edwin, Auntie Betty's husband, who is the ex-policeman of Mausel, was an avid family photographer. We had the most amazing times at, as a family together because it was in the days when there was no digital. And so... Um, we used to get together at Christmas and we used to have a slideshow. All of the family photos of all the pictures of everybody, the holidays would be on slide. It was so much fun. We used to gather round often, us children would be in our pajamas and we'd have a family slideshow. Very Downton Abbey, well, without the uh, pomp and ceremony. Now, this last house over here, I just added a bit of purple to that gray just to create a different kind of roof tone. So that one in there is slightly purple gray. You can make it blue gray if you want. And to keep that color story going, I'm gonna make this boat here purple. like that. I've just seen that I've missed a tiny bit of yellow there so I just need to fill in that gap there just behind that. I missed a tiny bit of beach. Awesome. So that's, um, that's a purple boat. I'm going to do this as a yellow boat over here. And then because we've got that beautiful pink house, I'm going to do this one as a little pink boat. You can do the colours, whatever you want to do. You can use whatever colours you want for your boats. I'm just trying to replicate the colours so that there's a bit of harmony, visual harmony. Visual harmony means that when you have one colour this side, you repeat it on that side and it helps to create balance to your painting. Unless you're Jackson Pollock and you don't want any balance and you want it to be chaos, in which case it can be what, I mean, they're just artistic rules, but there's no reason for you to, you know, have to keep to that at all. Okay, I'm going to go down here now and um, going to paint this one red. And this is to match the sky up there. So this is this boat down the bottom.
You could do orange if you wanted to, or ready orange. Now you do want to try and get a little bit of dimension into it. What do I mean by that? Well, we want to try and get some areas which have some sort of shadow. So to do that, I'm going to use purple. I'm going to use the purple to go down and create that line of the um, boat, the wooden bit down the center. And then this bit would be raised. And so I'm just going to do just a little bit of purple there and a little bit of purple there where the curve is. And that's just going to help it look like it's coming forward. In a minute, once it's dry, we'll do some lines. But that's just going to help to give it a little bit of dimension. This boat here can be whatever colour you want. I'm going to go with this teal colour, the same colour that I used for this one. But I'm going to add white to it. So it's going to be a paler version. So I'm going to add a bit more white than that. going to switch my brush to do that tiny little bit there behind where it goes in behind the boat. We're nearly there guys, you're doing really well. Do I have any questions? Do I have any concerns? I know I'm working you really hard. You're doing brilliant. Hopefully you're enjoying it, that's the main thing. Hopefully you're having fun. And you're realizing, wow, I'm actually better than I thought I was. And next, WI, I'm going to have a crack at the art. <laughs> so exactly the same. I'm using a contrasting color just to add a little bit of shadow there. So this is where the curve is. If you imagine the boat, it comes forward, doesn't it? It kind of, it kind of goes like that forward. And so we're just trying to create create that swoop and we'll add in some lines um, later on good job now while I've got um, the last bit to paint is the harbor um, and again I would use a gray you can add a little bit of brown to that gray excuse me um, but you want a kind of wool color so start lighter. I'm, I've got a light gray here and you can always make it go darker. But I'm going to start with a light gray and I'm going to do um, some brickwork example. I'll show you in a minute. But I, so I've just got literally pale gray. I'm going to color in my harbor area, the brick bit of the harbor. Just smudged my um, boat, my purple boat, but that's okay. I can just, I can just smudge that paint in. Nobody's going to worry about that. Okay, that's one side. I'm going to paint the other side. More white. Okay, that's my harbour wall. Now I want to add some kind of brickwork kind of thing into it. So again, you need a bit of brown, which is orange with blue. Actually, brown you can make up of any colors, but you need orange to get that brownie color. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my brush like a stamp. And I'm just going to stamp over the top a little brick pattern. 
Mine's got a bit of purple in it because there was purple in that area. But I'm just going to, I might do um, a line across the top, like the top of the harbour wall in that brown colour as contrast. I'm making this up as I go along, by the way, just letting you know. And now I'm just stamping just a little kind of brick pattern. If you don't want to do this, you can just leave it plain. So I'm just literally using the side of my brush and I'm just laying it down to create just a bit of texture. Just see if I've got any comments. No, everybody seems okay. Awesome, awesome. Working hard, ladies. Loving it, loving it. Okay, so that just adds a little bit of texture to um, to the wall. You can make it as um, dark or as light as you want. So I'm just going to add a couple of bits. So I'm going to use a bit of black and just add a couple of bricks of black in between. Black's a bit tricky because once once you put it on, you can't go back. But you might use dark grey. I just want to add a little bit of contrast to those bricks. Oh my God, I'm thinking about strawberries and cherries of Royal Cornwall show that just popped in my head how much I miss that oh so nice okie dokes so we've got our we've got a couple more little boats that we need to color in don't we so have a look at your picture and decide what colors you're going to go with I'm going to go this one here is orange like that and I'm going to have one that's green you don't have to but I'm going to have a green one awesome okay we're on to our finishing touches so the first finishing touch we're going to do is we're going to add in some reflection in the water I'm going to start off with yellow you need to be super careful when you're filling in this gap that you don't smudge your blue because it will turn green. So when you're putting the, put the yellow on first in the white area, but just lay it on without smudging it too much, then you can add orange. And just like we did with the top Cornish tin mine, we're just making it go sideways If your blue's dried, it's a bit cold in Brisbane, and so my blue definitely hasn't dried, but in your houses, they might it might have dried. So I'm just adding a bit of orange reflecting across the water. I'm gonna have to stand in front of the painting. Sorry, ladies, but I can't. Um, can't. I can't get to it. Oh, that's the wrong way of my brush. I'm also just adding in some streaks of blue across that yellow just to break it up so that you can see that it is water rather than just a big fried egg on the paint on the paint on the middle of the picture and as it dries you can play with this so you might want to add more color less color 
when you're putting light colors on dark colors, it is very difficult when they're wet. If I had more time, I'd probably hair dryer this just so that I could layer up that color. But I'm not going to have time to do that with you guys, so I'm just going to do the best I can. So I'm laying on some blue, laying on some orange, laying on some yellow, and then a tiny bit of white. just to give that sunrise reflections. Okay. We're go oh, did I just pull that out of the, out of the view? There we go. All right, beautiful. Okay, so we are now going to just do these finishing touches. So we need to do windows and doors and all that sort of stuff. Have a look at your um, sky. Decide if you want a bit more color in that. Now mine's dried. I'm just going to add a touch more red just in that final color there. And again, it, it as it's like painting in your house. As the paint dries, you can see if you need more or less color. And those sort of things you just need to um, have a look at. As it dries, you can decide whether you need to brighten it or lighten it or add or take away. Okie dokie. I'm going to paint some, some windows in my little cottages. So I'm going to start off with this one here. We're going to paint a little door here. And I'm keeping it super simple, super, super easy. They are literally, as you expect, square boxes and rectangles. Don't make it overcomplicated for yourself. There is no need. They don't have to be perfect either. The beauty of a painting like this, you know, is the sort of, well, the beauty of like a, a Cornish landscape is that it is a bit rugged and a little bit imperfect. So don't try and make it perfect, I would say. I'm just going to do the lines. You know how they've got those lines that go across this kind of building? So I'm just doing the lines that go across. Another window here. Over here, I'm going to do asymmetric windows. So one this way, and then one down this way. Okay, we're going to be finished in about 15 minutes, ladies. Maybe a bit sooner. I'm going to do a red door on this house here. Good job. Okie dokie. Now we're going to go down and I'm going to get my white, which has gone aqua color, but that's okay. I don't mind that. And I'm going to, I'm going to do, you can decide whether you're brave enough to do this, but I'm going to put a seagull on mine. So no, nah, it's not bright enough. I'm going to get some white. And I'm putting in a white head there. Going to get some grey. And I'm going to put in a grey body there. That's the wing. And I'm just going to mark it out. And once it's dry, I'll put in some extra, extra, um, white and black in a minute. So I've just marked it out. So it's a circle with a, well, that's kind of like a leaf shape, I guess. That's just a circle for his body. It's a very geometric shape. 
that's the back wing and he's going to be stood on top of my little boat here. Okay, let's see. The colours are reminding me of Clarence Cliff. Oh, yay, they are. That's right. That's a good idea. Okay, I want to add in um, some extra touches. So before we do our black lining, I'm going to add some orange buoys on the side of this boat. You know how there's those buoys that hang over the fishing buoys? So I'm going to add some pops of orange there. I'm going to add a really big orange buoy here. The beak of my seagull is going to be orange, so I'm just going to pop it in now and let it dry off. I'm going to add another boy that's just poking itself off the bottom of my painting there. So I'm looking in there and I'm not... Ha because I'm not square on, you ladies will have a much better perspective than me, but because I'm not square on, I can see when I look up there that my sun is not round and it's frustrating me. But it's because I'm painting it at an angle. And if you were painting it straight on, then you'd be able to see how to get the roundness. And I can see it looks like a bit of a squat fried egg. So I'm just going to try and round that up. That looks better. So I just added in a bit more red down this corner because obviously I'm because I'm painting sideways on, I just don't get the same perspective as you guys. Beautiful. My boats on the shore look like broken umbrellas. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to draw into them now. So we are going to, and this is a, you'll need, this is where we go down the black route. Someone had an amazing tip, okay? If you are really scared about using black, then why don't you let your picture dry and go back with a Sharpie. Um, someone did that. I'm just going to do some sand there as if it's stuck in the sand. Um, someone did that to one of the paintings. Well, I'm not sure. Um, I think it was the pigeons painting that I'd done, the Peruvian one. They actually went back with Sharpie, and I have to say it was genius idea. So if you feel like you haven't got a very steady hand, to do a black lining, because we're going to black line around the outside, then just let it dry and go back to it later on, okay? I'm going to just crack on with it. So I'm going to be super brave. Here we go. So I'm going to go round. I wish I had my glasses. That's the only thing I'm saying. I'm using my small brush. And I'm just going to... And I'm going to give my little beautiful houses some chimneys. This one's going to have two. This one's going to have one. And this one's going to have none. Cross there. It does take a steady hand, a bit of practice. Especially when you're doing straight lines. You've just got to kind of get enough paint on your brush and just go for it and not stop. And often when you stop, you think, oh, that's when you make a blob. So you just have to keep on going. Now, on this boat here, this purple boat, I'm going to give it a bit of a cab. Is that the right word? I'm not sure that's the right word. Not a cab. Um, what do you call it? The top of the boat. The hull? I don't know if that's right. No, the hull's the bottom. Anyway, the bit that you sit in. So I'm just giving it a bit of a... I'm going to go around my boys. And I'm going to give it another extra little room on the top. So I've just created that as a little shape. On the top here, I'm just going to add like little dots going like a, a little railing on the harbour. And 
and now I'm going to do my swoopy lines. I can't wait to see what you've done, ladies. It's going to be awesome. So I'm just going to move my canvas back just a tiddly bit so I can get in the front and I can um, do these black lines. going to get a chair, I think, to sit on. Oh, I just wobbled you, sorry. Let's turn, let's get rid of that light there so it doesn't glare. Is that okay? Bit, that's it, that. Okay, so I'm just a bit lower so that I can do these low lines. So I don't know when I'm going to be back in England, back to Cornwall. I just don't know when that's going to be. Feels like it will be forever. In the meantime, I've got Poldark and Doc Martin that I can keep busy with. And that's all I can do, really, sadly. Yeah, I don't know. They're talking about lifting the uh, um, well, they're discussing lifting the international travel in Australia, but just with the Polynesian islands like Fiji and New Zealand. So New Zealand, I think, as of this weekend, are out of lockdown 100%. And all restrictions have been lifted, I think, in New Zealand, because they've just done amazing things. Um, the difference between, you know, Australia and England is that Australia closed its borders really, really quickly. And because it closed its borders really, really quickly, obviously, it contained contained um, the virus coming into Australia. And most of our cases were actually from travellers anyway. There were very, very few national cases. And possibly that is one of the mistakes that's happened in England, is that they just didn't, you know, put enforced quarantine for anybody that had come from Europe. But you've got it now, so hopefully that will start to make a change. So I'm just doing this black lining. Now with these boats, I want to add in some, um, uh, what's the word, um, some markings for the wood. So I'm going to go down that long piece there, which is the long part of the boat, and then I want to Follow the curve like this to show the wood. Okay, so follow the curve. The curve that the arch bit that you did, your upside down umbrella, as Lucy said. <laughs> and then that'll just help to give that wood like effect. And art is all about impression, you know, unless you are somebody that is trying to create 100% realistic art. It's about impression. So I'm going to put in a long rope. And so, you know, it, what you see isn't the same as what somebody else sees. It's so subjective. Um, and that's why I think we shouldn't be so stressed about what the final outcome is going to be. If you've enjoyed expressing yourself, you've had fun and played and let your mind go and tried something new, 
then that's a fabulous thing to celebrate. You know, um, and to be honest, I've let go of ever being famous. You know, that's finished a long time ago. So if we're all having fun and trying something new, then I think we should celebrate that as one of our wins, shouldn't we? Okay, so let's put in, I'm going to put in a kind of long line there, which is my rope there. Going to add in some lines for the sand. And then I'm just going to do those lines for the boat's wood. Like that, and then back the other way. Sometimes you do need to let things dry like that hasn't painted very well on top of orange because the orange is still wet, but that's okay. You can always go back and touch things up afterwards. Okay, I'm going to stand up now. I'm going to do, I'm going to stand in front of the canvas and I'm going to do the water line. Where's my palette? Okay, I'm stood right in front of it. Sorry, ladies. Would gents, if there's a gent as well. Shouldn't assume it's all ladies, but with WI it usually is. My tummy is rumbling. It's clearly breakfast time. I arrived in darkness. I will go out to sunshine. It's beautiful. Brisbane winters are just fantastic. Because, I mean, it feels cold to us Queenslanders, and obviously I call myself a Queenslander now. Um, it feels cold in the mornings. It's probably, I don't know, 10 degrees, something like that, which feels cold to us when we're used to the summers up in the high 30s. But um, it gets up to 20 degrees in the day, and there is no humidity. So it is just lovely. And as you know, Queensland is tropical, so we do have very humid temperatures. Okay, I'm going to go around my little boat here. Now, if you're feeling confident, you can stick a mast in these. So put in a, lot, a, a black line, put in another little bit of a cab, put in some portholes if you want, you know, personalize the boats to however you want them. Some of them might just be like little rowing dinghies. Some of them might be sailing boats. Little Cornish fishing boats. Put a little cab on that one. And that tiny little green one at the back there. And I might put a little sail on him. Beautiful. How are we going, ladies? Oh, I've just kicked the thing again. Keep on kicking that. Uh, take that off there. I've got some little box. Mine is a bit wet and a bit shaky, so you're going to. Beautiful. Well, that is pretty much, I feel like we went into a bit of a quiet one then when I was concentrating with all my lines. Um, that is pretty much it. I want to paint some white over the top of my windows 
So I'm just going to do some tiny little crisscrosses just over the top like that. This is where you add all your tiny little bits of detail. Gone, goodness me, you could add in, a, you know, all sorts of bits and pieces. If, if maybe you are thinking of somewhere specific and you know exactly, you know, what part of the town it is, then you could add in a sign or something that you know makes it feel like somewhere beautiful, your little harbour village. Maybe it is Mausel or maybe it's in Port Isaac or... Lou or Polpero. There's so many beautiful little places where you could personalize this and make it feel like it's absolutely somewhere that you love and remember. Um, I've put in some windows there. I'm going to use black for my windows on this one here. And I'm going to use, put in a little black door as well. I may, might make it an arch door like that. Finally, because I did it in the um, I did it in the the mine tin mine. I added in a couple of birds. I'm going to do the same now. I know some people went, "Oh, I messed it up with the birds." Um, it is about how much you press onto the canvas, so don't press too hard. You literally just drag down and hook up. Pick up, drag down and pick up like that. So there's a couple of little birds there. I also did um, some stars. So you get a very watery brush with some white. And you can do this, which is flick your brush like this, or you can tap your brush. And although it looks really scary to start with, the color absorbs into that blue and you just end up with this speckle of kind of like stars that you can see. Um, again, that's optional. I'm now going to just do the tiny bits of detail on my seagull. So I'm going to give him an eye. And just with the darkness, I'm just going to do his back wing. So I colored him in to start with with that gray. And now I'm kind of just going to shape him around using my black. You could use a Sharpie for this like that and I'm just going to use um, the orange just to give him some little orange legs I'm going to add a bit more white to his dummy. Now, the other bits and bobs you could do is you could add, you know, some white highlights. I think I probably would. So where you want to kind of make things pronounced and just look like they're a bit more dimensional, like certainly in your upside down umbrellas, Lucy, <laughs> you could add white. If, you ca if you're using colored pencils and you can't add white, then you could add yellow or, you know, use a contrasting color. So one option, if you're using textures, for example, is that you, if you were using um, yellow, you'd use purple. So use your contrasting colors, basically. And that will just help to punctuate things and give things a little bit of movement. Those are the sort of techniques that you learn after many years of art. So I'm just adding in some tiny bits of highlight. Woo! Sorry about that. So here, where I want to pick up the top of that boat, I'm just going to add a highlight where the sun is on that side, a highlight down the mast, a highlight on the front of the boat. And you can use yellow, you can use white, you can use whatever you want to use. 
just like that. So you're just drawing in those tiny little, tiny little bits like that. And that's it, guys. That is our painting. You've done amazing. Hopefully, you've had a fabulous evening with me. You've enjoyed painting your Cornish. Let me get that back like that. Everybody can see that. Turn that up a bit. There we go. So that's it. That is our painting completed. We have finished our Cornish scene. We've got our beautiful Cornish cottages, the harbour, some boats, our seagull, a couple of boats down there. I've had a great time. It is six minutes, four minutes past six in Brisbane. Thank you. You are so welcome. You are so welcome, ladies. If you have enjoyed this, then please share the love. All of my art is free. It is on you create art at home. You are welcome to come back at any time. There is drawing, there is craft, there is activities for children. There is seasonal activities. You could use me and I would be very welcome if you wanted to have a fun, arty, crafty session with your WI when you get back together, then reach out to me. I'm more than happy to get up in the middle of the night and you could have an art session with me. It doesn't have to be as long as this. It doesn't have to be a two hour session. You could say to me, Karen, I would love it. Could we please do a little 40 minute session um, with, uh, I don't know, some creative drawing? Could you teach us how to draw a flower? Could you teach us, um, or could you come and give us a talk about art, how you got through COVID? I would be very happy and very, very honored to be part, be invited back in your WI. I have much love for you guys and all that WI does. Thank you so much for letting me be part of Connect Cornwall. Do enjoy the rest of the series. And if you've enjoyed today, please spread the word. You know, a lot of my friends have given up their time all for free to give you some activities and to add value to your life. So, you know, please show up. If it's not your thing, then there must be people in your WI that you know like a bit of yoga or whatever it is. Um, so please share those and support this great initiative. I hope you are safe. Please stay safe. Have a lovely, lovely weekend. Um, thank you, Mum, for sorting this out. I've had a great time. I'm going to go and have some sleep. <laughs> All right. Love you lots. Bye, Carolyn. No sip and painting here. That's okay. Come and see us when you come back to Cornwall. Beaches and cream, I will be there with big hearts and love. Oh my God, the thought of going back to Cornwall sends me wobbly. I just want to come back so bad. Um, Sylvia, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Tried something new. That's the idea. Well done, Gillian. Gorgeous. I love your workshops. Oh, you're welcome. I will still be painting. You are welcome to come. I'm starting a membership program, which means that if you want to, you can learn to paint and draw with me from, from home. So, you know, like my page, follow my page, and you'll get all those notifications. Thank you for a brilliant session. Don't forget, share your work. Take a photo, add it in the comments. Do not be embarrassed, please. It's about just feeling fantastic that you've done something. You know, there's so many people that don't try stuff. So flipping heck, well done you. Um, please share your comments. Please share your art. I want to see. I'm so desperate to see how you've done it. Okay. Uh, come home as soon as possible. I will, mum. Thank you for a brilliant session. You lost connection. Oh no, Lucy, I'm so sorry. But Lucy, I have saved this video. Okay. So don't panic. You can go back and do those little tweaks. Uh, anybody else? I certainly will explore the Highland cattle. I know behind here. Can you see? Let me just move this out of the way. Woo. In fact, I can show you. Would you like me to show you if you're still there? Okay, I'm going to take you down off my clip. There we go. So here are some of the paintings. This was last Saturday's. We did a whale. Uh, would it would have been Saturday morning for you. The week before, we did a blue cockatoo. This is one of the ones that we've done for children. This was uh, one of the moo cows. This is one of my lunchtime sessions, which is like an, 
um, a, oh, it's a 15 minute, 20 minute drawing, and it's all about sort of art and meditation. That was obviously the tin mine that we did. That was uh, our Highland cow, that was two weeks ago. Another one for the children was a llama. And so I'm just whizzing you round here, look. This week we're doing, um, so it would be Saturday, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna flip the screen and then I can do it this way. Um, this, we, we did this elephant and we're gonna do a rainbow giraffe. And here's some of the drawings. So if you've got kids that want to learn to draw, all of these drawings are free online, okay? How to draw a car, a guinea pig, what's at the end of my torch, you know, there's a couple of frozen pictures. I've got 160 art classes um, that, just go around my studio, 160 art classes online. This was another little paint and picnic for the kids. There's one of a dog, these are watercolor. And you know, even though they were for the kids, if you wanna have a go, you can, okay? They're not necessarily just kid ones. Great practice, so if you've enjoyed it and you wanna hone your skills, then have a go. That's what I say, have a go. All right, let's pop you back there. And I'll just see if you've got any, ooh. I'll just see if there's any more comments. Love the tin mine, I know. The tin mine's great. And um, if, I, if I get the tin mine down, you'll see that I tried to paint them in sim similar colors. Let's see if we can get that in two places. So you can see that there. So you can see how the colors sit nicely and you could have those on a wall together. I think that looks really nice, doesn't it? What do you reckon, Mum? Does that look nice? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm going to get them framed and they're going up on my wall and that's going to be my little bit of Cornwall. Both of these were inspired from Cornish Bird in the Sticks. Um, her artwork is fantastic. I have some of it um, on my wall, um, some originals, and I love it. I love the graphicness of it. She is a graphic designer, so everything is quite graphical. But uh, yeah, I love it. I think it's bright and it's happy. Um, and I think I'm, I would get these framed with a nice chunky white frame. Go and get your breakfast, speak to your Sunday on Zoom. They're great, love them. Okay, ladies, I am going to say goodbye now. Stop talking, Karen. I'm going to go back to my beautiful family and have some breakfast. Mwah! Lots of love. Take care.